I, I, I believe that it's a mistake to have a style. We architects today, we work in too many different places, too many different uses for the building. We need to be more responsive to what we do. We need to strengthen the quality of a place. Cities are made building by building, so that each building we make is a collaborating in this great work of art, which is the city. I just wanted to start by saying, Caesar, thank you for having us in to your office today. My pleasure, my pleasure. It's great to be with you. I'm delighted. Now, you have a spectacular suite here on Chapel Street. You're overlooking the Yale Art Museum, right? Right. You've been in this office now for how many years have you been we here? We have been in this office over 40 years. 40 years you've been up here? Yeah, right. Not quite in the same place. We were in that corner, but we grew to take the whole floor. So is this the office where you and your firm designed all the wonderful world-class buildings all over the world? Yes, it is, right here. It's amazing all the work that you have done and that you continue to do. I think New Haven is a perfect place to be, do work worldwide. The airports are nearby, yeah. yep. and, and the yeah. city is near, I, New York City is nearby, but not, we are not in New York City, which is such a bother. <laughs> I say, yeah, that's true, yeah. Oh yeah, this is much easier. My first question is, can you tell us as to how long ago did you come to the United States? Sure. I, I grew up and studied architecture in a provincial city in Argentina, in the northwest, about 800 miles from Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. And I got married in 1950, and with my, my, my bride was very young. She was 18 years old when we got married. And, and we were wondering if we should see the world before we get settled here. And, and we asked for scholarships, and I got the scholarship to come to the University of Illinois. And we came there, and as soon as we came there, after about two or three months, we loved the character, the people, the way things function. And we almost, almost decided, not quite, but almost decided this would be a lovely place to live. And then we got a job with Aero in Birmingham, Michigan, yeah. and that confirmed, you know, this is where we want to be, we're going to be Americans. You worked for him for 10 years, correct? About 10 years with Aero Sardiner, yes, great man, great man. And of course, some of the works that he did was, first of all, he did that Yale Whale. Right, right here. And he also did the classic TWA building that's at JFK. A, and and that, that was one of my projects. This was his design, but it's not one of my projects. I, I developed many of the details. As far as that old TWA terminal, it's being, first of all, it was kept and it's, I believe it's being made into a hotel, right? That was, I don't know how they'll do that, but yeah. I'm curious to see, and I'm glad that they are preserving it in some form. It would be a shame to tear it down. At the time you worked for Aero Saarinen, the world-class, world-renowned architect, you, you must have learned quite a bit from him, right? Oh, a lot. I learned a lot from him. Yeah. Also, he brought me to Yale. Oh. Because uh, he put me in charge of Tals and Morse colleges. I did not agree with him in many things, but that was his vision, and I interpreted it the best I could. And I think they are still good colleges for Yale. No, they I, really I, I, are. I have my doubts about the wall, but he was very, very keen on that wall. But it was a very cheap wall, cheaper than a brick wall at that time. It's really, um, as far as those two colleges go, th those were constructed, what, about 40 years ago? But they still look extremely contemporary. Although they do, that's the wonderful thing about it. They, 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 are, they, are, they are not locked in time. And, yeah. and that's a while ago because those colleges started building in 1961. Mm -hmm. It's a long time ago. So at the time you came here to New Haven, you then what? You then started your own firm and also became the dean of the Yale Architecture well, I, School. Actually, I came to New Haven just to be the dean. Oh, that's why you about, came. About two months later, they told me that they had selected me to do the expansion and, and renovation of the Museum of Modern Art. Uh -huh. So I had to open an office. It was crazy of them to hire me because I had not an office. I didn't even have a drafting table to put me in charge of that huge project. It was wonderful. That allowed me to open the office. And, and here we are. So at the Museum of Modern Art, when you worked on that expansion, you must have worked with um, 
the uh, Rockefellers? Yes, we, we primarily worked with Blanche Rockefeller. She was the president of the Board of Trustees. Two or three times we made a private presentation to David Rockefeller. Nelson mm -hmm. was there. That must have been great. Now, you have a home in Brantford, right? I have a home in Brantford. We have had it for a long, long time. We, we bought that. We started renting that house and then we bought oh. it. I think we bought it around 19... 81, 80, 81. So, oh, so you've been in town a long time. A long time. It's the, it's the, house, the, the longest house that I've, I have owned anywhere, anywhere in the world. Really? Really? <laughs> I wanted to know, since you have that home in Brantford, how much time do you spend in, in Brantford? We used to go move there in, in late May, early June, and stay there until November, every year until my wife moved her, 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 her work of landscape architecture to New York. Then she, she had a place in New York. And then we started using it less. We couldn't, we did not move there. For, but we used to, to, to go to spend the whole long summer there and early fall. So it's a great town. I'm very impressed with Bramford. Like, we love it. It's an unusual town, so, so stretched out. You know, we have a house in, in, in one end of Bramford, and my son has a house at the other end in Stony Creek. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, my son Rafael has a, he's also an architect. He runs our New York office. He has a house in Stony Creek, and for him, Stony Creek is home. That's a great place, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> Is there anything you see for Brantford? Do you think Brantford, uh, you know, it, it has its condominiums, it has its single families, it's got the uh, stores? No, it's, it's, Brantford is quite unusual. That has so many different ways that you can live in that place. And I think that's fantastic. You know, you can live on the shore, you can live in a small town, you can live in downtown. You can live in so many different ways. It's wonderful. It's a great town. Is there something you think that uh, should happen in Brantford? Ah, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. But this, uh, uh, yes, I think Bramford could have a few more hotels and things like that. Absolutely. Hotels. I believe that there is one plan now. Yes, I heard about this. You heard about that one. I know. I, heard, I know what it will be. It will be a great place for a hotel. It's true. <laughs> because in the past, I think, I think that the town of Bramford had all kinds of uh, shore hotels. At the beaches. Yes, and they disappear. Yeah, that's right, they disappeared. <laughs> yeah. It's a pity, it's a great pity. <laughs> Today they'll be popular again. Would you mind talking about some of the buildings that you and your firm have done over the years? Oh which my God, we have done many, many buildings. We, we are, at this moment, we have a building under construction for Yale Laboratory, which is very visible from Whitney Avenue. And, and, and we also, we are redoing the basements of all of those. So we'll be, we'll be connecting about five buildings in the basement area. This is gonna be a very important for Yale science. And uh, this is primarily biology laboratories, but it will, it will be a fantastic, very beautiful building. I'm very, very anxious to see it finished. We also did in New Haven, we did Century One building, the red, red brick and green trim, like a very old fashioned house in New England. And uh, we have in, in, New, in New York, we did the World Financial Center that now is- The Winter Garden. Now is Brookfield Place, but it's a hu yeah. huge project. We, we built that in the early 80s. My, they needed to renovate, and my, my son, Rafael, who is in New York, he did all of the renovation, and it looks wonderful, very up to date. The best known building we have are the Petronas Towers in, in Malaysia. Yes. Uh, very, very, very well-known building. But we also have well-known buildings in Milan, and we are doing uh, three towers in, in Spain, one in Bilbao, one in Madrid, and now one just being finished in Seville. Uh, as far as the Patronus Towers goes, at the time that you had those built, they were the tallest buildings in the That's world. That's correct. For about eight years, they were the tallest building in the world, which was amazing for everybody that the tallest building of the world would be in Malaysia. And also, th you have two identical also two towers. That it wasn't just one. Exactly. You built two. Yes, that's right. 
<laughs> How did you convince them to build two instead of one? Well, they, they wanted two towers, but they, they assumed that one would be very tall and the other short. Oh. But I felt that the, the, the image would be much, much stronger if the two towers were identical. Exactly. And then they create like, a, they, we joined them with a bridge and they create like a portal to the infinite, to the sky. So because those towers have become the symbol of the country, not just of the Petronas company, but of the country, the, the, the Malaysian sea meaning Malaysia. Yeah, they're so, so proud of it. So it, it has that, that mystical quality that I think you need to have to really? be that kind of a symbol. That's wonderful. Also, um, you know, I wanted to ask you about your work uh, as compared to other architects. You have like Frank Gehry who has a certain style. You have... No, I, I, I believe that it's a mistake to have a style because we, we architects today, we work in too many different places, too many different uses for the buildings. And I, I think it's a mistake to be carrying the same image in all of those things. I think we, we need to be more responsive to what we do. We need to strengthen the quality of a place and not weaken it. And I think if you do your own thing, you are weakening the, the, the quality of, a, of the place where you build. And I think that's a serious mistake. You know, over the last few weeks, um, we've been taken around your office suite here by uh, Celia Toche, and she's told us that you, all your projects work with the wind, the rain. We, we design each project for itself. We start building a model of the sites and putting a volume there of, the, of the, roughly how big the building will be, if it's tall, if it's going to be a tall building, or if it's going to be... A, and there we start designing which way the building should change. And we involve our clients deeply from the beginning. We believe that the buildings belong to the, to the place where they are built. They belong to the city. You know, I think cities are made build, building by building, so that each building we make is a collaborating in this great work of art, which is the city. More, more than the build, each building, the great work of art is a city. On the tour that Celia gave us, she showed us the um, plans for the uh, campus at Yale in um, Singapore. Oh yes, finish, finish. We did that very quickly <laughs> and very cheaply. Really? Oh yes. She said that was a project that, uh, that the firm took over. From yes, somebody else, right? That's correct. Yeah. They, they were, Yale was unhappy with the architects that were designing it, so that they let them go and they hired us. And also, she showed us this wonderful project that you're working on in San Francisco. Oh, yes, that's going to be one of the most important projects we have designed the Trans Bay Center and the Salesforce Tower. Salesforce Tower is, is already finished and open. It's, and it's the tallest thing in San Francisco, and it will be the tallest building for a long, long time. You have in Santiago, Chile, it's the tallest oh. building in oh. the whole hemisphere down there, right? Oh, yes, it's the sole building in Latin America, yes. Yeah. That's a beautiful building. It's a gorgeous building, yeah. I'm very, very proud of it, yes. I mean, <laughs> you've done so much great work all over the world, it's, it's just amazing. Yeah, we've, we've been very lucky. Over the years, you've received all kinds of honors, and would True. you tell us about the honors that you've received? Well, the, the most important honor for me is that I got the, 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 the gold medal of the American Institute of Architects that long ago, I think 1995 to 97, one of those years. And, and that, that meant a lot to me. But I also have a, a degree from Yale, an honorary degree from Yale. That's also very important to me because I have, for Yale means much, it has meant much in my life. That's wonderful. I wanted to know, you know, since you've been here in, in this suite of offices for 40 years and you have seen architects come and go, you've seen the styles and the trends, would you tell me uh, as, far as, as far as the next 10 years or 20 years, what do you see for architecture? Ah, uh, I, I, I stopped looking at the future. I, I, I'm too old to be looking at the future. I'm 91. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, I think actually wonderful things are happening, not things that I'll be part of, but wonderful things are happening. The integration of design with technology keeps on advancing to a point that I cannot participate. I, I, I don't control the, 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 the systems that you need to be designed to. The, I couldn't be hired in an office today <laughs> if I was looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, architecture has changed enormously in those years. Um, would you tell us what do you consider the Caesar Pauli legacy? Well, I, I, in some ways, two, two things. One is my buildings. My buildings are very much my legacy. You can go and see what I have done. The other are all of the people I have influenced, students, people that have worked with me. They create a new generation of architects. Many of, their, of the buildings are being designed today, are being designed by people who work with me or study with me. This is wonderful. That's all of those, those two things are, are very, very rewarding. So I, I don't need to be working. I can sit down and just see what happens. Would you give us some examples of architects that have, that have worked with you, that have gone on to... Well, well in, in New Haven, we have the, the office of Picard Chilton. John, John Picard worked with us for many years. In, in, uh, in Durham, North Carolina, it's, it's another firm of, of, of Duda Payne, two, two gentlemen who work with us. And in, 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 in Boston, the office of Robert Taylor, and who also work with us. So that we, we have architects that have worked with us, and some are running schools today, the School of, of, of Architecture of Texas, until recently was being run by a, somebody who had worked with us. So, so we, it's, 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 it's this, it's this person all over the world. And we have also architects that have gone to Chile, to Argentina, to many other different places. Also, I just wanted to get your thoughts on two architects. Would you tell me your thoughts on Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, marvelous. I have, I'm a great, great admirer of Frank Lloyd Wright. He had a sense of form and space unequal. No, nobody could match him, no other architects. The um, story about Wright is that when he did that house, Falling Water, I guess he was paid, but he didn't do any work on it, and then he was told that the owner was going to come in like an in the next hour? Oh yeah, I, I read that story. Did, did you yes. hear that story? It, it, it may be true, but it could also be something that Ray Wright invented. He loved to make up those stories. <laughs> so it could be either way. Either way, it's a, it's a, good, it's a lovely story, yes. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and also, I wanted to ask you about um, Philip Johnson. Oh yes, yes. Very, very clever architect, very influential architect. He, he is the one that really brought modernism to America. Yes, that's true. I think that's oh, right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Also, I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, there was a story in the newspaper at the time they opened that school here. It's the high school that you that your firm did. There's pictures on the uh, glass. You, you took a picture with your camera of leaves in Edgewood Park. Yes. And then it was like sketched onto the glass, right, is that right? right? And we have the two more typical trees here. We have elms, we have beaches, and we have oaks. So they are all there, and, and we've blown up, and they are gray. Yeah. But they, they also reduce the light, and, and they keep, people can look out easily through that, but they don't, are not seen from the outside. So they give privacy to the classes. Yeah, no, it came out beautiful. Perhaps the, the thing that we are doing most is the theater. It's a great theater. That's right. There's and a theater I, there in the high school, right? Oh, yes. Well, yeah. the high school is amazing because it functions like a real professional theater. Yeah. And, of course, over the years, there's, like, there's all kinds of theaters that you have done, right? Oh, we have done very many, like, oh, like almost 30 theaters throughout the world, yes. Yeah. I love this idea of theater because it's such a public space. So many people go to a theater. It's true. As far as the architects that are practicing today, is there anything you want to tell them? Well, there are many very bright architects working today. You, you mentioned Norman Foster, who is one of the great architects working today. Another one is, is Frank Gehry. They both have taught in this school here, and they both are good friends of mine. And they're both marvelous architects. I, I admire them deeply. And we have here in Hamden, we have a Kevin Roach, which is also another great architect. Yes, yeah, I've seen his work before. In fact, 
That firm did that tall structure here in New Haven, right? They do the Knights of Columbus. The Knights of Columbus, yeah, that's that's the tallest building in New Haven. Yes. Yeah. Now, at the time that that was built, there was a lot of that Brutalism. Brutalist, brutalist. Do you, do you like brutalist architecture? No, no, I never, I never, I never did. I never yes. did. I was never fond of it. It can be handsome. I, I believe that the school of architecture that is very brutally designed by Paul Rudolph. Yes, it's a rather handsome building. It's a very difficult building to use. I wasn't in there, but it is a very handsome building. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul Rudolph was a difficult architect, but he has a very good eye, a very good sense of proportions and form. Right. And of course, we have had also Lucan, who is an even better architect. He did the, both, both, both museums here, the, 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 the Yale Museum and the Museum of, of, of British Arts. Now, at the time that Kahn added on to the Yale Art Gallery, there was a lot of criticism because it was totally opposite the old structure, correct? That's correct. Well, how do you feel about, about oh, that? I think it was always wonderful. I always liked it. But some people were, were concerned. I, I, never, I was never concerned. I always thought it was a very good building. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for having us in today. You know, my, my, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank, thank you for you. taking time out of your very busy no, schedule. My, my, I, I enjoyed it, and I'm very proud to have a house in Bravo. <laughs> thank you very much, Cesar. Delighted, delighted. Thank you. Spot in Brantford? Spot? In Brantford? Yeah, my house. I <laughs> 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 No, but I, I, I also like going to the stand. What's that?